Welcome back everybody, Mr. Nom Nom Man here. This is going to be my second installment in my tank review uh, video series. This time we got the M56 Scorpion. It just hit stores for the second time ever on Xbox. Um, it's unique in that it is an American premium tank destroyer. There are not that many of them in the game. There are two right here. Um, they both came out give or take a year ago, I'd say, and they came out roughly at the same time, if not at the exact same time if I remember right. Um, they're kind of polar opposites. T-28 slow, heavy, big gun. Scorpion, small, nimble, no armor, fast firing gun. Um, you can get it right now in the store over here. You have two different packages. You got the fully loaded package, which comes with a camo net, binocular telescope, and tank gun rammer, which Wargaming got right this time, I feel. Um, and you can get it without that. I would recommend getting the cheaper package. Um, I prefer spending less gold whenever possible. And truly, you're only you're spending the extra 700 gold on purchasing 800,000 silver. So if you have the silver laying around where you don't mind just burning the silver, get the cheaper package. Um, so what is this tank? Or what can it do? Um, the first thing you should think about when thinking about the Scorpion is right there in the middle of your screen under the whole armor. You get one millimeter all the way around. But when you look at the tank, it kind of makes sense. Um, you can see exactly where the four crew members would sit. Driver, commander slash radio operator, gunner, and loader. There they is. Um, so when designing this vehicle, why bother putting armor down here to protect the engine when you got your crew members just kind of sitting out exposed? Um, so that's number one thing to keep in mind, um, but that's not that bad because if you look over the camouflage rating, it's high in, in comparison to other tanks in the game. It's, it's in the top, I would say easily top 5% as far as camo, camouflage ratings go. I mean, you're talking Borzig level camouflage here. Um, it's speed limit, 45 kilometers. It's not blazing fast, but you're going to get up to it pretty quickly in a straight line. Acceleration of 200 horsepower, it's low, but this thing weighs next to nothing. Um, I'll give you a little bit of an idea of how little it weighs later on in the training room section. Um, chassis rotation of 40s, pretty, I mean, that's medium-esque. You're gonna be able to rotate the actual tank fairly well, but when it comes to moving the gun back and forth to the 12 degrees a second, um, yeah, it's pretty good pretty wide gun range. You can bring the gun over to, let's say, right about there, all the way around to right about there, but it's going to take you a while to get swing the gun from left to right, um, going back and forth. Um, and it brings us to rate of fire. Let's get into the gun. Rate of fire at 7.69. It's pretty good. Um, and it's a 90 millimeter TD gun at tier 7, so you're kind of right in the mix. You're not down there with the Challenger running, you know, a 17-pounder, which is essentially a equivalent of a 75, you know. Um, so at 90, you're in the same league with the other tanks I have brought up on the screen right here, the Amex AC-46. I'm grinding through it at the moment, but with this 90 mil gun, it's pretty similar. Equal pen give or take, damage is the same, you know, it, it's, gun handling is entirely French, but same thing right here, um, SU-100M1 runs a 100 millimeter, but it's right in that same neighborhood of 240, 250 alpha damage, but you can see the pen on this, 100M1 is substantially lower, and that's really where this Scorpion shines, um, at 219, that's very high, it's higher than the French even, French are known for their high pen. Um, I don't have it in my garage anymore, but let's compare it to the other, or another tier seven American TD right here, the 25-2. Um, it's another 90 millimeter AT gun, but, and it's doing the 240 damage, but you're only getting the 170 pen at, I mean, you're, you're talking almost 50 more pen. That's huge, <laughs> huge. And uh, that's where this tank shines. So, 
you get the rate of fire in combination with the pen, in combination with the camo, that's what this tank is. Um, um, as far as view equipment, it's all about staying hidden. Uh, combine the camouflage and the view range. You're going to want both of these cam camouflage nets just going to accentuate that already high camouflage rating. Um, binocular telescope. I would choose this over coated optics. You only got 350 base view range, which is terrible. I mean, that's the best. 350 is not good at a tier 7 tank. So you usually want 380 minimum at this. So coated optics is just not going to get it done. You're, you are going to need binocular telescope, which is fine because it's not like you're going to be shooting on the move with this thing anyway. You're going to have both of these up. You're going to be sitting in a bush. You're going to be putting the gun to work. And when you put the gun to work, you're going to want the faster rate of fire. Um, I looked at VB Addict. Uh, it shows that the tank uh, gun lane drive was higher on the list, but with a two second aim time shaving off 0.2, I don't see the purpose. Um, if you want to drop the camera on a binocular, I guess you could pick that up, but I don't I don't see the point in any of it. This right here is going to be your best loadout 99% of the time, just given the tank's abilities. Um, for the crew, I'm running a, my American Medium crew in it, just because it's easily my best crew. Um, you can tell uh, I got quite a bit going on here. You're easily going to want um, six cents. You want to know when you're spotted so you can dip out because you don't want to be taking damage if you can help it. Um, supplies, you got a pretty decent ammo loadout. Almost loaded into a match right there. Ammo loadout, you're not going to run out of ammo that much. I don't think I ever have. I haven't played it a ton. I've had it forever, and it's just kind of a... It's not a bad tank, but it's not my favorite by any means. It's, it's very limiting. You have to keep your distance. So here's your AP rounds, 219. It's not that great. Uh, the high explosive rounds, you're going to keep that for resetting the cap, or it maybe situationally there's that tank. It has very low hit points. It's hold down. You just need that little bit of damage. It's a 90. It's not going to be that effective, but whatever the heat rounds are very nice it goes up to 275 it's gonna unless it's spaced or well angled you're likely going to pen whatever you're shooting at um i mean this thing can go up to tier nines but at 219 it's gonna get the job done most of the time um consumables i run the very basic loadout um if you want to spring for the cola put that in, put it over the uh, fire extinguisher or first aid kit, you're going to want to always have at least the small repair kit. Um, for when you get tracked, you can get them up real quick and duck back behind the ridge line because um, you don't have the armor or really the hit points to sit there and just be taking shots. 820 hit points isn't that much. All right. Well, we're going to... I'll show you some gameplay footage of it, but first I want to show you some training room controlled video of it kind of show you uh, just some different aspects of it I'll show you um, kind of its weight in action if you will or the lack of weight show you the spotting range mechanics on it um, really demonstrate the lack of armor and uh, kind of show you why it can't do close quarter combat that well. First we're going to start with showing you how little armor it has. We have a T7 combat car here driven by Dan. It's a tier 2 premium that only sees tier 2. And you see it's just cutting right through um, with one millimeter of armor all the way around. It just it can't withstand any sort of fire. Um, I mean right here I'm trying to maneuver. I got a dead driver. I didn't want to or uh, heal the driver, but I mean, you can see I'm trying to actually get away from him in the combination of a dead driver and just a poor traverse, poor gun traverse. It, it doesn't withstand close quarter combat well. You just can't really maneuver it very well. It's it's a tank that you do just, you have to sit back with. And once they get in close with you, it's going to come down to luck most of the time. Just like right here. <laughs> I think I had five hit points left over right there. Um, here's a M4 Sherman. It's running the derp. I'm um, just kind of show you. It's a tier five. Um, 
we were going, I was trying to show what a ram would do right there. It didn't really work out, but um, I wanted to show that it was one shot by the derp, a little bit of ramming damage, and then there's the second derp shell right there. Um, the same thing, but against a knight. Um, here to show you kind of what a ram will do to it. So I get one shot into him, and yeah, he rams me, and I'm almost dead. I think he only has to put in one, two, maybe three shells, but... Right, here we'll show you where this thing really excels. He's in the BK4502B. He's just kind of driving across here. Right? I'm in a bush. I'm keeping him at distance. Um, I got my camera and binoculars up. and You can see here, um, my sixth sense never comes up at any point during this. I'm just sitting here shooting at him. Um, no, I am shooting heat rounds just to kind of... Uh, I just wanted to show that it... Uh, has a higher shell velocity, it's going to get to the target quicker. You don't have to lead it quite as much. But as you can see here, I keep rocking back and forth. I want to keep the bushes between me and him. Um, say, and he, he's doing me a favor here by firing while he's driving around. So it's, uh, I mean, this is an optimal scenario. I, I did it just for recording purposes, but hey, you can get the idea of this is where it excels. Um, sitting back keeping the distance, keeping the, your camo rating up. Um, I got muffled shot on this crew, so that, that is helping. But in, in general, it's you're going to have no problems hurting any tank you come across. <clears throat> Here's an actual random battle now. Um, Sacred Valley, it's the war variant, so we still have this old uh, ridge up here that they took out, and I'm going to take advantage of that here up into some bushes. This is a tier 8 match. Um, it was actually my first match that I sat down to record for the Scorpion. Um, and here you're going to really see the view range get put to work. I'm going to get a decent bit of spotting damage here, not to you know, give any spoilers. but um, And as you can tell right there, I'm experiencing lag through this match. Um, you can see my bars just jumping up and down wildly. Um, but I still managed to pull out an alright game, surprisingly. Um, so throughout here I've spotted now five targets, I've done three shots on target, and I've yet to be spotted. Um, there's The spotting damage starts to roll in, I mean, I'm just sitting here, I believe that's a lag, yeah, lag spike right there. Um, but, personally, it's, it's, this is not a tank that I play a lot. It can be a boring tank. I'm really, it was hard to come up with exciting footage for this tank because it, it's a very camp, campy tank. You have to just sit back, use your bushes, use the camera net, use the binoculars, and it just pick away at them. You have this high rate of fire, pretty good pen. Um, Accuracy is good enough. See, my sixth sense never came up right there. That T32 just knew I was shooting from that push. It was shot after shot after shot. And he kind of assumed I was there. I turned around to look, see if there was a tank behind me or something he was shooting at. But no, he, he just kind of guessed where I was and got lucky. Um, but yeah, that one shot from him took out my gas tank and hurt my tracks. Um, it's not rare in this tank to where one shot will take out multiple components. Um, it just, it's going to happen. Um, but you can see my sixth sense isn't on anymore. I'm still just sitting here just getting free shots on target. Um, same with this spotted damage. It's just slowly kind of rolling in. Um, you, you cannot be aggressive in this tank. You just can't do it. Um, it may, at the other tier 7 tank destroyer that goes to 9, the SU 12244, you can be aggressive in that. You can get up, you can mix it up, you can, you know, play almost like a medium in it. This is not like that at all. Um, you really just gotta, I mean, I, I keep saying it over, I feel like programming. Sit back, you cannot take uh, damage. Um, you if this tank cost any more than it does currently, I wouldn't recommend it to you guys. Um, the price where it's at, coupled with 
if anybody actually likes this style of play, then, you know, it's a good tank. But if you're just looking for a money maker or an American crew trainer, you know, anything of that purpose, this isn't going to be the best tank to choose. There's cheaper tanks that are better at it, um, at making money and at getting your crew trained in it. Um, and this is where Xbox players or console players in general are lucky as opposed to PC players. Because PC players have to deal with, um, you know, if, if they have an American TD crew, they're, they're going to want an American TD crew trainer. Um, on Xbox, we can, you know, put a heavy crew into a medium or a light tank and vice versa. Um, I got a little aggressive right here. I wanted to show you just what happens when you do get aggressive. I got a shot, shot into the Type 59, took one shot from him, there goes the engine. Like I said, it, it does, it just takes module damage. Right, see, I'm trying to snapshot there, and it just, it's it's not what it's good at. You can just tell the lag through this match is just terrible. Um, the, the entire match is just lagging. Um, at this point, I decided I need to get out of there. Um, I fall back. Luckily, I have, what is that, a T29 and a T32 right there. Maybe not. Yeah, it looked like a T32. I got lucky that they were moving forward there and I could then fall back. Um, spotted damage still just rolling in. And uh, one thing I haven't mentioned is the gun depression on the thing. It, it is. There's very few tanks that will have better gun depression than the thing. It has 10 degrees. You can shoot the ground in few feet in front of yourself just on flat ground and uh that's where this is really coming in handy right here i'm, I'm kind of perched up on this ledge with my nose up in the air but my gun is still coming down to get that I, mean, <laughs> I couldn't believe i got that shot right there he had to have been mad sitting behind that rock but um this thing is accurate i, I believe it's 0.33 um it's not the most accurate but that's it, it's good enough to get troll shots like that, you know, it, it's, that's not a shot that should have landed, but, you know, it, it, it is what it is. <clears throat> At this point, um, my team's take one, those two heavies broke that upper flank right there, and I'm still just here getting free shots. That one, I don't know if it bounced or, uh, missed or what happened there, but it's, this gun will produce when you can get it into a spot where you can just put it to work, get it firing, you don't have to worry about getting the return fire. Just, like I said, six senses essential in this to know you're being spotted and you need to move. Um, I chased down the challenger right here, I tried to, I don't think I actually get a shot into him, but... Um, after this I got one more match to show you the it's and it's the same type like I said it was hard to come up with exciting footage for this and I think it's because it's just it's not an exciting tank play um you sit in a bush and you snipe that's how you play this tank um but as you can see here I got a good chunk of silver um I didn't have any ops on or anything that's just what it does I have a premium account even without a premium account 46 thousand is not terrible um, that, that match right there was good enough for a class one. Um, I don't feel I did anything amazing right there, but it's not a very popular tank, so stuff like that, the, the class medals, you know, come in easier. But the spotting damage did almost 2,000. Accuracy was pretty good all in all. Um, and for the most part, I was able to remain unspotted. I got, I did get six sensed early on in the, uh, when I was in the first bush, and then obviously when I moved up to be aggressive, I, I was being spotted. Um, but I got lucky. Didn't get any Artie in this match. Um, Artie will just tear you up. Even the littlest bit of splash damage will completely wreck you, It'll destroy multiple modules, kill crew members, um, it will happen. Alright, so this next match, we're on mines, southern spawn. We are top tier, or I am top tier, I don't know what I'd say we. I'm, I'm used to playing in a platoon. Um, so anyway, top tier, and I'm gonna go sit over here to the left in a bush. Because that's, like I said, that's what this thing does. You gotta, as the speed to get out to, you know, a bush early, you can 
sometimes get into aggressive positions and use your gun depression to be a nuisance, but you really gotta be in a spot where you're not gonna either be spotted or you just won't be taking fire. Um, so, and this match, I, 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 I was just able to fire the whole time, just constantly fire. Um, I get lucky right there and get a nice blind shot. Um, but it, it's the, the slow traverse of the gun actually I feel allows you to be even more accurate. You're not going to necessarily overshoot quite as much, um, and that that's just me. I'm not <laughs> I'm not an amazing player. I understand the game. Um, that's where I feel I have some authority to make these videos. I, I do understand the concepts behind it. So this tank right here, like I said, it it's. Uh, or I'll get back to the accuracy. The, the the traverse on it's so slow that you will you'll almost have trouble keeping up with tanks. And you can see here throughout this video as I'm switching over from the tanks that are on this right side of the hill over to the ones across the water. Just how long it takes the gun to travel, it, it can be frustrating even at distances. Um, so the further you can sit back, the better because the accuracy is, is usually still pretty good. I mean, I, that was a nice shot on that ARL turret. Um, M5A1 just took out almost all of his health. Um, throughout this entire match, I don't think I actually get a kill, but I, I shoot plenty of tanks. I'm just spreading the love, if you will. Get some track damage on that T-34-1. And as you can see, the my team's already pushed all the way up to the north. It's looking pretty good for us at this point. We've lost one light tank. Um, we saw the two French tanks sitting over here. There was a bit of lag again. My, my internet's terrible for those of you that don't know. I live in the middle of nowhere. So, um, satellite internet's my only option, which, as some of you may know, it does not support internet gaming well at all. There's a built-in lag, so... I'm lucky in that I get to use my 4G cell phone connection to play World of Tanks. Most of the time it's good enough. Um, through the matches I was recording today for this video, I was having internet troubles, but ended up being good enough to get at least a few matches in recorded and get the training room videos done for you guys. Um, I do want to thank Dan for uh, taking it was a good hour out of his day to help me film that. He, get, he didn't get anything for it other than my thanks. <laughs> so, um, I, and I mean, th this this is not an exciting tank. I, I spent the whole match just sitting behind this one bush, and I played well. I mean, it, it's it's just a it's a boring tank that you can sit back, you just get to shoot at things, and you get money. It. This, it does pay well. It's a tier 7 premium. It plays up to 9. Um, it does not get the preferential matchmaking. But it, it's it's a tank that, you know, you have to have the, the taste for this sort of tank. Um, you know, even the same as maybe like the Dicker Max, where, yeah, it has a good gun, but it's a terrible platform. You have to sit back with it. Um, those just aren't my style. Um, I mean, granted, I play everything, but it's not what I enjoy playing. Um, and here's another, you can see the, the, just the trollishness of this gun. At, at .33, it plays more accurate than that most of the time, or it feels like it does, at least. Um, you know, in that last shot, I mean, it wasn't quite aimed down all the way, it was close enough, but it was close enough to get the picture that it's an accurate gun, high rate of fire, good pen, great camo, crappy view range, so you have to have binoculars, coated optics. Um, if you could just throw coated optics on this thing, let's say I had a base range of 390, this tank would probably be a lot more fun to play, in my opinion. Um, but considering you have to be sitting still, it just it takes some of the fun out of it for me. You can abuse bush mechanics. You can get good games like this. I had a high caliber Confederate game, got eighty-seven thousand. But 
if if I'm being honest, this is not a tank I would recommend for just the average World of Tank player. If you don't have a ton of tanks and you don't like these type of tank destroyers, I'd pass on it. But if you do like this style of tank, this is a great tank. If you like this style of sitting back, letting the bush do its work, letting your gun do its work, and just sitting there, then this tank is for you. Um, once again, I hope you've liked my video. Um, I will continue making them as long as I continue getting views. I got pushing 400 views on my first video. I did little to no promotion. But anyway, it's Mr. Nom Nom Man. Hope you enjoyed my video and hope to catch you next time. Bye.